If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. So initially we have the cookie sliding to the right and because it's moving it would initially have some kinetic energy. When the spring brings the cookie to rest we have a final potential energy and in addition because of friction we're going to have some thermal energy present as well. And we can call that ETH. Now through a form of the conservation of energy we can set the initial energy equal to the final energy. Now in this chapter we have learned that this thermal energy term can be replaced with a kinetic frictional force multiplied by the distance that the cookie slides along the surface. The spring potential energy can be replaced with one half times the spring constant times the distance that the spring was compressed. Notice that the distance the spring was compressed will be the same as the distance that the cookie slides along the surface. And then of course kinetic energy is one half times the mass of the cookie times its initial speed squared. Now in fact we don't need to know the mass and the speed of the cookie to get the initial kinetic energy because the question states that value as being 20 joules so we can actually replace this entire term here with 20. We will also note that the spring constant was given as 400 so we'll go ahead and plug that in for k and when we multiply that by a half we'll actually get 200. We also have the kinetic frictional force stated in the question as being 10 newtons so we'll go ahead and plug that in. The result is a quadratic equation whose variable is d the distance that we are looking for. We'll go ahead and subtract 20 from both sides so that we can get it equal to zero. The resulting quadratic equation can be solved by using the quadratic formula. In that case we'll have an a of positive 200, the b will be positive 10, and c will be negative 20. So we've set up the quadratic formula here. When you solve that you get a positive root of 0.292 meters. We can reject the negative root and so this becomes the correct value for d which is how far the cookie will slide from its equilibrium position before momentarily coming to rest. So in part b of the question remember that the cookie had just momentarily come to rest and so now the initial kinetic energy would be zero. The spring is still compressed so we still have some spring potential energy equal to one half k times the distance squared and then the cookie will be propelled forward by the spring and it ends up moving and as a result there's going to be some final kinetic energy that we're going to be calculating also because of friction once again there will be thermal energy generated between the cookie and the surface so we're going to have the thermal energy as well once again we're going to set the two energies equal to each other we have the initial spring potential energy and we're going to set that equal to the final kinetic energy plus that thermal energy as before we will replace the thermal energy with the frictional force multiplied by the distance and then since we're trying to calculate the final kinetic energy we can subtract the frictional force times d term over to the other side now remember for d we're going to be using the distance that we had found in part a because the cookie is going to slide to the left a distance of 0.292 meters back to its equilibrium position so we'll plug in d k and the frictional force. And when we simplify that we get approximately 14.2 joules for the final kinetic energy once the cookie has returned back to the equilibrium position. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it please subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I will do my best to answer it on YouTube.